Hi, my name is Hitesh and you're watching SQL Injection Master Course. Below is my web homepage where you can access details about me and can leave your valuable feedback. Plus, a very important announcement that you can purchase all of my courses now from my own website, hiteshadri.com. There is a nice section that says learn from Hitesh and you can reduce a lot of third-party resource and price uh, upgradation in my courses. So definitely buying from uh, original seller is uh, worth valuable and much cheaper than as any other third party like uh, I would really like not like to mention any of the names. So hope you will visit my website and of course you will be leaving me a feedback and a email regarding if you are interested in purchasing any other courses like pen testing with Python, Metasploit, uh, some other web design basics, uh, C, C++, Python, I have a rich set of variety of courses. So after this shameless publicity, self-publicity, let us try to move ahead. What we see, what we saw actually in the last video was how we can generate a custom error that should be totally in our control so that we can get some dump of the database uh, information via that error. Now how we can impl implement that knowledge into a real world application? So let me first of all go to our backtrack instance and here is our all the files. Let me close it. I was actually trying to see all the things. If it is working or not, really it would be a time waste for a file doing a blunder all in front of you. So definitely I do a lots of practice and lots of uh, coding as well. So first of all, what you have to do here is really simple. When I have given you all these files and everything, First of all, you need to travel to the cd slash war slash www slash master slash lesson five. So in the lesson five, if you'll travel out here, you will do a quick ls and you will file. There is a nice thing that says command.txt. What I have done in your zip file, I have included this command.txt because it could be really troublesome to again remembering those 26 commands. And if you forgot some of them, really it would be a painful to follow up in the next lesson. So what you can do, you can simply open up uh, that simple things by, let me just uh, show you how to open that. So localhost uh, slash master in that you have to go to lesson five slash command dot txt. So that's a simple way to run this file. Now, since I have written this file uh, by hand, not copying and pasting all the things from MySQL command prompt, so there might be chances of some typos out there. So be aware of that uh, simply because I have found one here. Uh, really, it would be awkward. Let us uh, just try to uh, summarize what we done in the last video. Uh, the only point to be key point interest here is this. This is actually the core part of the query in which we are actually getting dump into our error base. So you can put a database version, user, entire table, underscore name and everything out here. So what I'll be doing, I'll be just copying this uh, syntax here onto my uh, text uh, document that is gedit. I'll paste it here. Now, interestingly, what you have to do, first of all, since we are working on a front end environment, what you need to do, you need to get rid of this extra column because it's only required in, when you are working on the command prompt and also have to enclose everything into the bracket. So I'll be just doing the, these changes. I'll make a control plus C. I'll be again moving back to my lesson five and I have already discussed that a single code breaks the query and I can verify it by putting a backslash. Then single code and hyphen hyphen plus joins the query. Now what I can do, I can simply check uh, with a function that is end one. It gives me you are n, here it is. And if I do a and equals to zero, that is, it doesn't gives me that. So what I can do since this point is actually generating all the things out here, if I make all these query statement here, I would be definitely getting some error and that error I can simply control it. So I'll paste everything here and I'll just hit enter. Now, if you see error like this, you have an error in SQL syntax, that means you have done something wrong. Your bracket is missing, your quotes are missing, or you have made some typo. In this case, uh, here you can see I have made a typo that is select in the spelling of select. So make sure when you copy paste from the command.txt, uh, you actually do all these stuffs.
So from here onwards, the things are getting interesting. Now, apart from that uh, ridiculous error, I would say, these errors are actually quite a good. And SQL is such a friendly, uh, you can say language, that tells you what is the error, that, that, that tells you what is the solution of that error and how you can dump the database even. So no problem with the SQL, we are trying to be more than tricky. So operand should contain one column. So what is the problem here? So it says, uh, there is one column that says this one and there is a one column, this uh, big one, which we have uh, shrinked with the name of uh, here A. So there should be only one column. So what I can do additionally here, I can make it select one from. So this would really make things working for me. I would uh, again enclose everything in the brackets. So don't forget to do that. Control plus A, Control plus C, copying everything. And what I can do after end, I will select everything and replace it with my new command. And check me out if it is working. So it's again saying some error. Oops, now this is really, really a bad thing. I have, I should have made these things uh, actually working here in this case. Let me first correct it here. Here it is. Select. Now really, really a very bad mistake that I have done here. But uh, I beg your pardon for this. Every derived table must have its own alias. Now see the beautiful of beauty of this language. It's telling you everything what you have to do. So now it's saying you have to create an alias for its own table. Now we have already seen we can create an alias by using this uh, method that we have got A. Now in this case, we won't want one more alias. We can simply put, let's say, simple B. And now everything is now set up. Again, let me copy this and ask the SQL that, are you going to dump me the database now or I have to do, be, do a little more tricks with you? So SQL command is our wish. Okay, so it says duplicate entry security. Now, sometimes you might not be getting an error directly dumping with the database because we have seen in the SQL statement that it always doesn't dumps out the uh, name of the database. It can some, sometimes dump out you the things like uh, some wrong errors. Let me try to hit it again and again so that somehow I could, yes, here it is. It says subquery returns more than one row. If you found this error, don't just worry about it. Just hit the refresh key two or three times and you are definitely going to find it. Now what I can do here is a really, really simple thing. Since these things are working for me, I can simply say, now what you want to do? This is our core query part, select database. I can write version here. So let me copy this. And after end, I will be selecting everything. Oops, again. So we don't need to worry about it. I'll just hit uh, enter or refresh key again and again. So here we have got an error that says your this is your version. Likewise, what you can do, a simple task for you as well. Since I have dumped and showed you everything on the command prompt and I've showed you the path how you can do everything out here. So what you have to do, find out the database name, uh, the database version, then find out the table name and column name. So that's it for you. And that's it for this video that we have gone through the double query injection. Now, let us see in the next video what we have got for you. And thank you so much for watching and keep enjoying the injection series.